a small note on the autocollation and the partial autocollation function. Let's first define the ACF as rho to some like k is the correlation between x at time t and x at time t plus k. And now the partial autocollation function is quite similar. Call it phi k or phi k k sometimes is again the correlation between x t and x t plus k, but conditioning on all the observations that are in between. So conditioning on x t plus one to x t plus k minus one. So that is what it is. And what I want to just talk about is what is the conceptual understanding. Let's look at a small time series here. Look at some observations. Let's say we have them, something that doesn't have too much noise, but let's assume something happens like this. Those are the observation. Now, when we look at the correlation, then we're looking at, compared to just a mean value, let's assume that the mean value is zero just for simplicity, then what is then the story here? We have <coughs> the correlation between two observations, say between this one and that one, well, is how much are they alike given uh, around, uh, how much information do we get about this point in time given that we have served this one? That's basically what the correlation is saying. Now, if we go for the partial autocorrelation function for lag one, well, there are no observations in between, so the lag one partial autocorrelation is the same as the autocorrelation. Now, if you go to say, what is the partial autocorrelation function? Say this is time t, and this is t plus two. What is the partial autocorrelation function? Well, let's first, the autocorrelation function again, well, there's a large correlation between the two. So the autocorrelation may again be large, but the partial autocorrelation function is saying, well, what happens from here to there when we know this? Now the question is, what is the model? Now, if the dependence, if there's no dependence on the one that is two step backwards, but only depends on the one that's one back, there's no information left. Let's go through an equation and see how that works out. So let's look at an AR1 model. So what is that we're looking at here? Well, we have a model where we have x t is equal to phi x t minus one plus epsilon t. So far, so good. Now, if we want to look at the partial autocorrelation function or the autocorrelation function at lag one, so because that's the same thing, so phi one is, and rather than looking at the correlation, let's instead look at the covariances here. So what we have here is then just the expectation Let's use a C for this of one. So it's the expectation of xt multiplied minus the mean value, but assume that's zero, multiplied by xt plus one, because we use like one here. And if we insert what we have up here, what do we get? Well, we get the expectation of if we keep xt and insert the expression for xt plus one, then we say multiply by phi, and that plus one means we get phi xt plus epsilon t plus one here. Now, this here, the expectation is a linear operator, so we have the first part here, that's the expectation of phi times xt, xt times xt, 
plus the expectation of xt times epsilon t plus 1. The last part out here is zero because the future epsilon has not influenced xt yet. And what we're left with is this, where xt times xt, that's the variance. So what comes out here is phi times the variance of xt, or just a phi if you're looking for the correlation structure. Now, if we go for the partial autocorrelation function at lag 2, so rather than lag 1, let's go to lag 2. We know for the AR1 process for the autocorrelation function, lag 2 will just give, give us phi squared. But now let's look at the expectation of, let me do that in blue, to resemble what I met up there. The expectation of xt multiplied by xt plus 2, given that I know what xt plus 1 is. That's what I'm looking at. Now, what can I say about this? First of all, let us just plug in what we have. So we have the expectation, let's do as before, of xt times the same thing as we did over here, phi xt plus 1, it becomes now, plus epsilon t plus 2 given that we know xt plus 1. Now, when we continue looking at this expression down here, first we look at this here. Epsilon t plus 2 is out in the future, also future from this. So there's no contribution from the epsilon there. Now, so what is left here is the expectation of x t times phi times x t plus 1 given x t plus 1. Now, this becomes a random variable, and what we see here is that given that we know this, given that we know this one here, what happens? Well, the expectation that becomes constant, it goes outside, so we can move constants outside, so we get phi, the random variable xt plus 1, times the expectation of xt. This expectation is the mean value, and the mean value was set to be 0. So thereby we can see that if it was an AR1 process that gave us this, the partial autocorrelation at lag 2 is indeed 0, whereas in lag 1 it is the phi that we have seen previously. So that was just a small add-on. Thank you.